Now is a great time to be picking up a new MacBook because both the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro have been updated this spring. So you're safe. You don't have to worry about a new version of it coming anytime soon. The problem is picking between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro isn't all that simple. It's not as easy as just saying this one's better than this one. So here's everything you need to know about how these two laptops differ and which one is right for you. Now, one of the reasons that picking between these two laptops is so difficult is because on the surface, they look really similar. They're a similar size. And if you configure it a certain way, they're even in a similar price range, which that can be a really confusing thing to parse out. So let's go through all the stuff that's the same, first of all, and get that out of the way. To start off, the build quality is the same on both these laptops. They're both really, really well made. They use that aluminum unibody style. You're not gonna see any difference in terms of build quality between these two laptops. It also uses a similar trackpad and keyboard. The keyboard here is the Magic Keyboard. Came to the MacBook Air first, but now it came to the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It's an excellent addition to these laptops. It replaces the old butterfly-style keyboards. Really reliable, really satisfying typing experience. There is one difference between these two keyboards, though, that the MacBook Pro comes with the touch bar, whereas the MacBook Air has a standard row of function keys. Now, this isn't a huge deal. I actually prefer just the standard function keys. They're a little more reliable. You always know where they are. And I find that the touch bar isn't super useful in actual day-to-day -day use. So I don't consider it a huge buying decision type of feature. I realize some people are gonna like the cool factor of the touch bar, which you can use for um, shortcuts or controls in certain apps, but I really don't think that there's enough there to be using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Other things that are the same, they both have the same size bezels around that 13.3 inch screen with the 720p webcam on top, and of course the Touch ID fingerprint reader on the top right of the keyboard layout. So that's all the same, and the thing to note about that is the MacBook Air is the cheaper option, so if any of those things are really important to you, you are technically getting a better value if you purchase the MacBook Air while still keeping all those same features that are really high quality. There are, however, a few differences that are worth noting that kind of look similar, but are slightly different. So the shape of both of these devices is slightly different. The MacBook Air comes in the wedge shape, whereas the MacBook Pro is just a completely flat design. I actually prefer the flat design of the MacBook Pro. It makes it seem a little thinner than it actually is, but the MacBook Air technically is a little bit lighter. So if that portability factor is really important to you, you know, it's good to know that the MacBook Air is a little more light when you throw it into your backpack. And then this is purely just a surface level thing, but the MacBook Air does come with that gold color that I have here. I really like this option and it works well for the MacBook Air. I actually wish that they brought it to the MacBook Pro too, but as for now, it's an exclusive option for the MacBook Air. One more thing that's similar, but there is a slight difference is port selection. Both of these have very minimal ports. They use only USB-C Thunderbolt 3, but the difference is that the MacBook Air only comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports, no matter what configuration you get, no matter how much money you spend on it, whereas the MacBook Pro has two different options. So the $1299 version comes with just two, similar to the MacBook Air, but if you opt up for the $1799 version, you get four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on each side. So if you know you need more ports for those extra accessories, you should know that the $1799 version of the MacBook Pro is really your only option with four Thunderbolt 3 ports. Even the speakers here, though they look pretty much identical, are a little different. The MacBook Pro has slightly better speakers than the MacBook Air, a little more bass, a little more volume, and it just feels like a more full-bodied audio profile than what you get on the MacBook Air. And then there's the most discrete difference between these two laptops when you just look at the specs or sit the laptop side by side, and that's the display. They're both using Retina displays, as Apple calls them, which means they are 2560 by 1600 resolution. These are both great displays, but the MacBook Pro does have a more colorful and brighter panel that it uses compared to the MacBook Air. And that's really important in terms of color precision if you're someone who's like a professional photographer or video editor who really relies on those really precise colors. And that's an important distinction to make that really starts to show you the different demographics for who these two laptops are for. And obviously that plays out the most in terms of performance. But again, Apple isn't making this easy for you because when you run down the spec sheets, these actually look really similar in terms of performance. For example, when you configure both of them at 1299, 
you're getting a quad core Core i5 processor in both cases. So you should expect similar performance, right? Of course, that's not true. And the main difference is pretty technical. It's that the MacBook Air uses just a nine watt processor, whereas the 13 inch MacBook Pro uses a 25 watt processor. And the difference there really is noticeable. And I'm not only talking about when you are running a really heavy application. For example, let's say you want to pull up a Zoom meeting, which is a pretty typical thing these days. Um, you'll notice that the MacBook Air gets really hot and bothered when you do this. The fans spin up really loudly. And I even had one case where my laptop just shut off completely after a long video conference. That's not ideal. And you're not gonna run into those same performance limitations with a 25 watt processor in the MacBook Pro. Now I haven't tested every configuration of the MacBook Air, but I really don't think maxing it out is going to fix that problem. And of course the Pro does handle things like video editing, photo editing, and music production a whole lot better than the MacBook Air. This is the most powerful 13 inch laptop I've ever tested. It even slightly surpasses the new XPS 13, which is also a really powerful 13 inch laptop. Now, what you shouldn't do is go into the MacBook Pro, assuming that because it's labeled a Pro, it's a professional grade machine with super powerful components. That's just not entirely true. This is really more for the hobbyist or the freelancer or the aspiring professional creative who's doing this stuff on the side, not necessarily sitting down with this all day running, you know, 4K video renders in Premiere. If that's you, you really should be stepping up to that 16 inch MacBook Pro. That's the device that Apple has made for actual creative professionals who need that kind of power. Now, when you actually go to buy a 13 inch MacBook Pro, you are quickly gonna see that there's a lot of different options. Basically, Apple has split it into a base model $1299 version and a more advanced model, the $1799 version. And they're basically identical outside of the processor choices. I won't go too far into it because it's kind of an entirely different discussion, but the $1299 version comes with eighth gen Intel processors, whereas the higher end version comes with 10th gen Intel processors. So it's pretty difficult to parse out which of these you should get and what the performance differences are, but it's worth noting because buying a MacBook Pro, especially these 13 inch ones, is just not that simple. The last thing to mention here is battery life. The MacBook Air is the clear winner in this case in terms of how long it'll last on a single charge. It'll give you around two hours of more battery life or 20%. That's especially true in lighter usage, which the MacBook Air is made for. Neither of these are battery life champions, but the MacBook Air does last significantly longer. And that is gonna matter if you're somebody who's out with their laptop all day. So hopefully that gives you some ideas about how these two laptops differ and which one is really right for you. When it comes down to it in terms of pricing, the MacBook Air does come in a little bit cheaper, and that is an important point to make because it starts at $1,000, and that's a really attractive price for something like a student or a professional who doesn't really need to run a lot of heavy applications. And this is the point where you do need to be kind of honest with yourself because if you're really just gonna be using this laptop for daily light computing tasks like web browsing and Netflix and Spotify, you're not really gonna need the extra performance that you get with the MacBook Pro. In general, I really wouldn't recommend configuring up the MacBook Air too far because if you get into the price territory of the $1299 MacBook Pro, you're starting to lose out on the value in terms of performance. As much as I don't like recommending old components in a new laptop, like this $1299 MacBook Pro, it is the better choice here in terms of not only performance, but also display compared to the MacBook Air. Now, if you are somebody who needs that extra power and you can afford it, jumping up to the $1799 MacBook Pro is a good option. That's the one I tested here and it does handle itself quite well with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and the 10th gen Core i7 processor.